students lived in Kathleen Cowan's uh, duplex down Main Street with his parents, Mark and Tana. Sometime, probably in the first week of Bill's life, he suffered a stroke. And kind of knows us what, what that might lead to. But anyway, over the course of time, about 18 months, he was not able to walk because um, he could only walk on toe. And many of you will remember that. And I remember the first day he walked, and then the second he started running. But it's always a great day. His favorite game was um, run around my living room. Very awkward for a child that age. We just like we started running too. And then when he was about three and a half, he, uh, January 10th, in those days, uh, we got a call in Madison uh, that he had uh, had a seizure at home. We knew he had seizure disorder at that time. And because uh, he had one at our house. And uh, anyway, the boy has a fire. Uh, Paramedics responded, and uh, anyway, they I got the call to come from Canada, please come as fast as you could to have to the boy. And um, by the time we got there, the helicopter was landing, and then brought an airplane back to Madison to Children's Hospital. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, Tam had a newborn baby who was also <coughs> had a spring palsy and I had to be taken care of. And, um, so Mark stayed with him, and Tam and I took off back to Madison. <coughs> Down there, the doctor who had come down, who was the head of the pediatric department at the University Hospital, um, greeted us with basically that he had drowned and that he wouldn't be the night. So that was the one time in my life that I argued with God <laughs> that this is more than I can take. And, uh, they are, we are lost with the granddaughter, but just under the control. And so, anyway, during the night, then the doctor came back and told us that I'm going to try something new. And we put him on a vibrating bed that was just shaking hard. And um, this was on Saturday evening. Um, Sunday, um, one of the things, the reason we're telling these stories is because this is about family. If you've been part of that family. Um, Edward, uh, uh, the Edwards, uh, Kathy, and um, <laughs> um, showed up right after services. And of all the people that I was thought of that would come out to the University Hospital would have been them because they lost two children there within two days of each other. And they said, no, we could not not come. So they came. And they prayed with us. But anyway, the doctor, by Monday morning, the thing was that everyone in the hospital was coming to see what was happening, all the interns, and all the residents were, well, this has never been tried, you've got to come to, you know, so they're coming by and seeing this, and they were just, wow. Well, the story is that he, three days later, he was awake, <laughs> ready to go home, and he missed that helicopter ride, too, you know, <laughs> so that was the blessing that he had from, with Joel. And uh, he's, like I said, was dedicated to, to, to this church, and that's the other thing I want you to understand that he is going today to experience his second birth in his family. And then he forever is a more part of his family and will always be. Joel, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came to see, seek and to save the lost sinners like us? Yes, I do. Do you want him to be your Lord and Savior? Yes. I'm now going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son. Spirit, for the forgiveness of your sins and for the gift of 